The Wheel of Time could have been bigger than Game of Thrones. It should have been a legend of modern storytelling that rivaled the cinematic Lord of the Rings. Instead, it's one of the worst shows ever made, and millennial writing has a lot of bloody fingerprints all over this show. But I still wanted to give it a chance. If there's one thing this show doesn't give the slightest chance to and hates more than anything, it's the three male characters from the two rivers. Not that it doesn't sabotage the females either, but I'll get to that in a moment. And it really, really messes up two other iconic characters. Let's start with Perrin. Oh man, Perrin. They did Perrin dirty. Perrin is the most bland, vanilla wafer, one-dimensional piece of aerial font to get copy and pasted from the grand Google Doc of millennial malfeasance to this Google Doc version of the Wheel of Time. I know this because of this guy. This guy is my favorite character out of this entire fucking show. He's more interesting than Millennial Perrin because he's actually using his abilities to lead the hunt for the baddies. Oh wait, that's what Perrin from The Great Hunt did. So they made this guy Perrin, and then they couldn't figure out what to do with the actual Perrin, so they millennialed the fuck out of him. And they didn't do much better with Matt. Matt is one of the most charismatic characters in the Wheel of Time, but in this show, they reduce him to a sad guy who's afraid of becoming his dad. This Matt, Amazon Matt, should be on one of those network TV dramas that's trying really hard to be a bad middle class novel about boring 21st century relationships. Ugh. Then we come to Rand. Rand was a victim of the old millennial writing bait and switch trick. He's got two big moments, one when he totally slaughters High Lord Turok with a thousand knives, where did he learn this, and another when Lanfear sexes the fire out of him and burns his house down. Other than that, they've literally taken the Dragon Reborn out of the Wheel of Time. It's like watching a Lord of the Rings show in which they minimize the time dedicated to Frodo. Oh my god. God, next we've got Millennial Lame Lan and Borane. The show gets Lan and Morane totally wrong, which is a huge part of why this show totally sucks, because misunderstanding these two characters misunderstands the very essence of the Wheel of Time. Lan is a strong and powerful warrior. He's a reassuring presence. Morane is a clever magic user. They are two opposites in total harmony. But then, the Millennials started interpreting. They blew up these two characters with one of the things I hate the most about trite Millennial writing. Ruin a relationship by making it spiteful and sour for no reason. They invent a petty dispute between Lan and Moraine that the seal clappers of Twitter are going to call heart-wrenching drama, but the rest of us would call heart-wrenchingly bad writing. I'll have my dinner up here tonight. Make it yourself. These are not the great characters with incredible chemistry we came to see. They're coarse threads spun from conspicuous cliches of other millennial media we have already seen for the past five to 10 years. It's not the wheel of time. It's untimely, tiresome millennial TV tropes. And now we have arrived at what I think has totally destroyed this show. The millennial obsession with creating the next Game of Thrones. The one question the executives and writers constantly ask themselves when creating this season was how can we Game of Thrones this up or hey guys can we Game of Thrones this scene a bit more and they definitely did. The Wheel of Time wants you to know that people are having tons of sex just like in Game of Thrones. Focus on your own pleasure. When it starts to feel good you follow that sensation. Let it bloom deep inside of you. There's polyamory, there's BDS emery, there's humpery with swordplay, there's more BDS emery. They want this to be Game of Thrones so bad, but for some reason they just won't show the titty. I mean, if you're trying to write a knockoff Game of Thrones and you won't show the titty, have you undermined your undermining of your own undermining? Oh, in, in Malkier, older women take young men's virginity to um, show them the ways of love. Mm. The Wheel of Time also wants you to know that this is a harsh and unforgiving world, just like Game of Thrones. This guy gets to get his fucking face impaled on this fucking horn. This guy dies choking, gagging, and gurgling in his own blood. Egwene is tortured to the point of death. See her face revel in the desecration. But then Egwene turns into a sadistic killer who slowly chokes out her former tormentor. 
Nynaeve is traumatized and drenched in blood, just like she's had her ovaries ripped out. This is all fine in a grim dark universe. Robert Jordan's Wheel of Time isn't a grim dark universe. It's not The Witcher and it's not Game of Thrones. I mean, like it says, like right on the cover of the books, it says Wheel of Time. The more you try to make it Game of Thrones, the more lame it becomes. We've already seen that show. We want to see Robert Jordan's world brought to life. I remember Game of Thrones being fast paced. I couldn't believe how fast each episode passed and how every episode ended on a cliffhanger, leaving me with the question of what happens next. The biggest question you will have for each episode of The Wheel of Time is, fuck, is it over yet? I've sat in traffic jams on the 405 that have moved faster than this show. The Wheel of Time's terrible pacing makes you feel every tedious second of their eight hour show. You can literally feel the strands of time burning away. One of the rich parts about Jordan's writing is the descriptions and dialogue. It's not without its flaws, and yeah, people can be called a wool-headed ox or a ninny-headed goose. But in this show, most of the dialogue is either ill-timed millennial sarcasm Did he expect we would fight the last battle against an army of kittens? Modern speech Don't be so bloody surprised I'm a hero of the horn Or lines they have literally lifted from Game of Thrones Bend the knee You're never further away from Robert Jordan's incredible world than when characters are talking And that's just sad why are you taking the piss? We really can't let them get away with this next atrocity. The music they use is total garbage. It alternates between trashy techno stuff on dirty reality TV dating shows and snarky teen vampire dramas. You'll hear a lot of people say things like, This definitely needs more episodes. But there's just so much lore and story, guys. And if it just gets 12 or 18 episodes, it will be so much better. No. No, it needs less episodes. It needs like zero episodes and it needs to be over so we can get a reboot in like the next 10 years. Even if they did have more episodes, they would just cram more of their own bad ideas and awful storylines into the additional episodes and make an even longer, more boring slog of a season. Hard pass. I don't want it. This show is incredible at mangling the great parts of the original stories and terrible at creating original parts of its own story. So we have to talk about the dumbest scene of this show, if not the dumbest scene in television this year. Rand's epic duel with Ishmael. This is the most millennial writing of millennial writing, the subversion of expectations. Instead of Rand, it's mostly Eggwing going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a legendary channeler. Instead of an epic sword fight in the sky, Rand just slowly walks right up to Ishmael and casually stabs him in the chest. Ishmael is a legendary channeler. Only in a world created by the most idiotic writers would he ever stand still and wait for someone to walk up to him and then allow that person to slowly raise their sword and then slowly stab him in the chest. How fucking stupid do you have to be to write this kind of thing? Wheel of Time writer stupid. I swear to God these people watch Rings of Power and said, we can do worse. It just didn't seem right to us for this for this moment. Rand's battle with Turak is another devious derivation of doo-doo. Now, I don't know about you, but I watch fantasy shows because they have epic sword duels, and I was super excited to see this dope duel brought to life from the books. I wanted to see Rand and High Lord Turak go through the forms. Well, Rand just effortlessly kills Turak and like 20 other people with a crappy knife spell. I get it, subversion. I suspected this was going to be a terrible show from the very first scene of the season when the writers shredded up the incredible set piece from RJ and did what millennial writing teams do best, create something far inferior. How soul crushing that is. The books had a now iconic start. Perfect setting, perfect narrator, and a surprise guest, and a surprise reveal. By contrast, the show begins in a forgettable setting with an uninteresting villain, clunky conversation, and a trite philosophical question. It's confounding, contrary to the lore, and above all, it's just not interesting. See the difference? And then they just left out a bunch of fun stuff, like blowing up the Illuminators Guild. That should have been an awesome and just genuinely fun event to behold. And like all of Tom Marilyn's story, that was fun. 
Like, what's the point of adapting a book if you don't want to use the book? You know, I honestly think the show despises the females more than the males. I humbly submit the nincompoopification of Nynaeve. Jordan's Nynaeve was stubborn, wise, witty. She's got some great zingers for all these wool-headed idiots. And motherly. In the show, she's just kinda... pouty. She'll chug a glass of dirty water rather than use the one power on command from Aes Sedai. And, hold on, I'm forgetting something. Oh yeah. Nynaeve is a fucking badass channeler. She has an awesome duel with the Forsaken Aganor in a stone maze. She channels twice within the arches when no one is supposed to channel at all. And in one instance, it seems like she brings back a gate that disappears forever by sheer force of her ability, which shows just how insanely powerful she is. But none of this is in the show at all. So viewers of the show totally miss out on these epic moments and seeing how awesome Nynaeve really is. Oh yeah, and then there's another truly crazy thing that they omit. Nynaeve is hell bent on revenge against Moraine. Like you can feel the hate burning through the pages of the book. But the show never dives into this. The one time there is genuine animosity between characters, they ignore it. Also, and I have to mention this, it's a fun trait that Nynaeve tugged on her braid. The show never does it. I get it. Subversion. You know who I really loved though is Egwene. She was like the wholesome girl next door that you grew up with. Like you knew she was super smart and talented and was going to do great things. She's falling in love with Galad. She's excitedly exploring Sadar. And very importantly, she's worried about Rand and wants to make sure he is safe. Oh wait. That's from the books. Genuine, wholesome feelings are poison to millennial writing teams, so there is none of this stuff in the show. Amazon Egwene is extremely angry and unbelievably powerful. Firstly, regarding the second, she just forces out a giant wind and then just forces out a shield and goes toe to toe with one of the greatest channelers ever as someone who's barely even learned to channel herself. She's just a legendary channeler now, no training needed. I get it, Egwene is a dragon reborn, so subversive. Secondly, regarding the first, they totally lose the thread of Egwene. This is part of a much larger problem, which I will return to with much glee. Uh, but for the moment, let's just finish up how they totally botched Egwene. Amazon Egwene doesn't need help from anyone. She has the 21st century writing room morality flowing through her, not Sadar. So in a key moment, she just slowly chokes her former sentient master to death. That's what most of us would do, but not what the character Egwene did. She was saved and restrained by her friends. However, in this show, her friends aren't there to save her or restrain her because these millennial writers have no idea what friendship is or how it functions. Oddly enough, there's a wonderful example within the pages of a book called The Great Hunt by Robert Jordan. It would be cool to see a TV series adaptation of this great novel. The next great crime committed by the writers is to rob Egwene of an awesome poetic payoff. You see, Egwene has been trained by the Sension to use magic to explode the ground to find ore. She then uses that very training against her former tormentors, killing hundreds of them, not just one. By millennialing as hard as they possibly could, the writers lost the ability to maintain a broader view and see and recreate these epic character-defining moments from the books. Instead, they deformed Egwene into another standard female character from the 21st century who is simply petty, alone, and damaged. What a bummer. Elaine is a refreshing tea and crumpets dollop of Anglophilia, but I'll never forgive the show for not showing Elaine hanging out with Egwene and playing with Sadar in the tower and giggling and talking about Rand. I like it when a TV show reminds me that there's good in the world and makes me feel warm and fuzzy on the side, so kill me. I never liked men from the books and I don't like her in the show. If you're team men, I hope we can still be friends. On a positive note, I'll say that the Wheel of Time has triumphed in assembling a group of unlikable millennial tropes who perhaps belong somewhere, but definitely not in a Robert Jordan adaptation. The Wheel of Time Season 2 is yet another tedious, wasteful adaptation marred by millennial misinterpretation. This isn't simply another turning of the wheel, it's the outright destruction of it. Oh, you can smell the shit from five miles away. 
When it was all over, I felt a profound sense of relief and happiness. Relief in knowing that there is no way this show would go more than four seasons, and happy that all of these people would soon be unemployed. <laughs>